Hello, it's Mike here, and today we are going to look at how to prevent bloating when transitioning to a vegan diet. And there will also be some interesting points here for people who are already on a vegan diet, so I didn't forget about you guys. Okay, so we're gonna look at what are probably the two main causes of bloating when people go vegan, and we're gonna look at some promising, scientifically validated ways to hopefully prevent it. The reality is some people who transition to a vegan diet experience bloating. I didn't, but I know people that did, and I get a fair amount of messages about it. Obviously, it doesn't feel good, which could be really discouraging, and some people might stop trying to be vegan because of it, but in terms of digestive well-being, that would kind of be like traveling from Northern Canada to a tropical place and being like, whew, it's really hot here. Uh, sir, could, could you just pass me my bag back? I need to go back to Canada. It's too hot for me here. So just like how a Canadian in that situation can make a couple small changes, like take off that scarf and that coat and have a great temperature experience, someone going on a vegan diet can make a couple small changes and prevent this bloating and have a way better experience in terms of their digestion. So I did do an article on this exact topic. If you read that, sorry for a bit of repetition, but let's just go into our main cause right now, which is a massive increase in fiber. This is the obvious result of replacing various animal foods that have zero fiber in them with plant foods that have a lot of fiber in them. While some might view this bloating and digestive upset as a flaw in the vegan diet, it actually is a result of a previous deficiency a fiber deficiency. Prepare to be astounded, according to this paper in the Journal of Nutrition, 97% of Americans are not meeting their minimum intake of fiber. Yes, while well, the Institute of Medicine recommends about 30 grams of fiber per day on average, the average US citizen is only eating about 15 grams of fiber per day. No wonder there are so many constipation commercials. You know, we got bacon and eggs and maybe a piece of toast for breakfast, which is still less than a gram of fiber. And then lunch, maybe you're gonna go get a Big Mac, three and a half whopping grams of fiber, and you get the picture. And that is why our public restrooms sound a bit like torture chambers. And that 30 gram target for fiber consumption might actually be too low. If you look at prehistoric populations, it appears that they were eating around 100 grams of fiber per day. So three times higher than that, and about six times higher than what people are currently eating. But one thing is for sure, nobody's body is prepared to go from that 15 or so grams a day of fiber up to the 60, 70, 80, maybe 100 plus grams that someone might eat on a vegan diet. So how does fiber actually cause bloating? Well, it's all about your gut bacteria. From the Center of Nutrition Studies, Dr. Thomas Campbell said, quote, when you first change your diet, you may not have the optimal bacterial community adapted to your new diet. Those bacteria then ferment the fiber and produce gas in a unprecedented amount, but thankfully it gets better. Most importantly, that bacterial shift represents a shift away from potentially pathogenic bacteria and to more protective bacteria strains. Yes, according to research on the topic, a vegan gut profile contains less E. coli, for example, and more protective species. We also see that even vegetarian gut profiles are way better at digesting phytates, for example, in a petri dish, those pesky anti-nutrients that prevent mineral absorption. This brings me to how soaking your beans can be a great strategy for preventing bloating, as Thomas Campbell also says. Whether you're just going vegan or you've been vegan for a while, sadly, a lot of restaurants probably aren't soaking their beans overnight because that probably just costs more. Okay, moving on to the solution to this, which is hold on to your seats, just maybe ramp up your fiber consumption slowly. Screw that, Mike, I'm going full fiber. FTW, fiber of the wind. Why go full fiber all at once? And no, this isn't coming from me who isn't a nutritionist. According to WebMD, this is coming from the ethereal nutritionists, not mentioning any sources, but how the nutritionists recommend slowly increasing the fiber in your diet to allow your body time to adjust. There is a surprising amount of plant foods that have really low levels of fiber. For example, a piece of white bread has about one fourth as much fiber as a piece of whole wheat bread, and brown rice has seven times as much fiber as white rice. Believe it or not, there are a lot of whole wheat breads that are actually a mix between whole wheat flour and white flour. Those might work here, and also just not going crazy with the beans right away could be good. But I have to mention a lot of these low fiber plant foods are processed foods, and by dodging the higher fiber unprocessed foods, you are dodging some super healthy foods like legumes, which are the single best predictor for elderly survival, according to this study. 
So I would personally think of this as a short-term solution so that you can just survive the transition and then you don't have to worry about eating too much fiber. And a good tool for doing this is chronometer. You can just go in and look and say, oh, maybe that whole wheat sloppy joe with a ton of beans is not the best idea on my first day vegan. And if you really wanna go for it, you could be tracking what you're eating and just making sure that you're ramping up your grams of fiber per day. Do it more mathematically if that's your style. And a final little thing that could help here with high fiber consumption is simply drinking more water. The theory is that fiber binds up with water and makes it a more stable situation in your gut. You might be less likely to get one of those peaks of bacteria. I can't say it's super substantiated, but couldn't hurt. And really quickly, I wanna cover a potential cause of bloating on a vegan diet, which is really theoretical, so we don't need to talk about it too much, but basically it's the idea that a lot of the gas within your digestive system is from actually just swallowing air when you're eating. According to WebMD, again, another unsubstantiated claim that half of the gas in your digestive system is swallowed air. And that is why we also see an increase in bloating when going on a breatharian diet. It's a real issue. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> On a vegan diet, you're probably getting to take more bites of food, which is actually awesome. But the more bites, the more air you could swallow, I guess. And this is all just because plant foods have more volume than animal foods. Okay, moving on. Solution to this, maybe eat slower or perhaps drink stuff out of a straw, a reusable straw though, save the environment. And I personally feel like I swallow a ton of air whenever I eat spaghetti, so maybe go for like larger noodle pasta. This next potential cause of bloating when going vegan is sort of the opposite of the fiber one in a lot of ways. And that is potentially eating too many refined foods which can lead to overgrowth of candida. Candida albicans is a naturally occurring fungus within the digestive tract, but with refined foods, it can sort of bloom and lead to bloating. Well, the general trend I would say is to increase fiber content and eat more whole plant foods when going vegan. Some people tend to just go vegan and shift directly toward all of the processed foods with high levels of refined sugar and refined oil. So how do you know if you're going the too high fiber way or the too much processed food way? Well, only you can know. And this is an issue because food amnesia is real. Can you uh, describe your last meal? It was pretty much just kale. Just kale. Oh, but we have footage of you eating five cinnamon rolls consecutively. What? Uh, yeah, I, I guess I remember that. They never forget the kale. The solution to this problem is definitely eating more whole foods and less refined foods, less refined sugar and less refined oil. On plantspace.org, I actually have a spreadsheet that can help you follow how many whole foods you're eating, how many refined foods you're eating. However, just the fact that you're tracking it might change it, but it's still worth checking out. Now, if you are just going vegan and having enough of a challenge removing the animal products from your diet and processed foods as well as too overwhelming, then it is worth considering eating more often. To be more specific, eating smaller meals more often. That way you are creating smaller humps that could lead to any spike. Or you could do that with the fiber solution as well. If you are eating too much fiber, you can get less in your system at a time. So again, creates less of a bloom. Now for another solution to this, which I think is really interesting, and that is using essential oils medicinally. This study found that peppermint oil and eucalyptus oil were both highly effective at reducing candida in a Petri dish, at least. And from this 2016 study on peppermint oil and IBS or irritable bowel syndrome, in the peppermint oil group, bloating was reduced at 24 hours and 28 days, but it was not reduced in the placebo group. It's cool, they actually measured how far out their bellies were protruding to get that result. Remember, this is a small amount of oil medicinally. Don't start frying things in peppermint oil. So in summary, I would say the vast majority of bloating when going vegan is from a massive increase in fiber. It's simply your gut not being ready for that much fiber. There are also the other potential causes such as eating too many refined foods, spiking candida and leading to bloating, or the probably less likely, but still somewhat possible, just eating more food and swallowing more air situation. But if you are experiencing bloating when going vegan, don't let it get you down. You can figure it out, you can make it through, and then you can reach all of those awesome health benefits of being a vegan and also save animals and help the environment. So many good things. And I just realized my shirt button's unbuttoned. Was this unbuttoned the whole time? Oh gosh. 
Okay, before I let you go, a couple things to keep the beginning of Veganuary going. I figure I might as well put my ebook, my cookbook, on sale down to $9.99. No, no, no. It's on MikeTheVegan.com and I will link it below. And the second one is, I tried that new community feature with a beard poll, a should I shave my beard for the new year poll, and it narrowly was, no, you should not shave it. I do wanna mention I would grow it right back. But because of your input, I will not shave it, at least right now, also because it's been in the realm of zero to negative 10 recently here in the Midwest. So not gonna happen right now. Okay, so thank you for participating in that. There were some funny comments and thank you for watching this video. Feel free to like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. I'm getting sweaty. Oh, Canada.